We've been going on about the market and the focus on India as a big opportunity going forward as well. So let's get bottom up. Uh, we have Coromandel International after it introduced a number of products to enhance crop yields. So to understand how these new launches are likely to impact their business, we are now joined by Raghuram Devarkonda, who's the executive director at the company. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Devarkonda, for joining in. You know, we looked at your... Uh, Quarterly performance, the revenues were down about 28%, but the EBITDA was lowered by about 32% as well. That's what's happened before. Let's talk about what's looking like in the near future. In the first quarter itself, you've launched 10 new products. Uh, will they start contributing to the revenue in FY25? If yes, then what's the outlook that you have from this year for the company and these 10 products in particular? Yeah, thanks for having me on your show, um... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as you might have noticed, the monsoons have set in uh, just about on time. And at least in the southern part of the country, it's a pretty comprehensive coverage in terms of, you know, the clouds and stuff like that. So the external environment is augering well. And uh, we have timed these launches just at the, you know, Karif period so that we make full uh, advantage, take full advantage of that. And not only that, I think we need to be mindful of the Indian farmer and make sure that all these products, uh, you know, provide the kind of uh, uh, benefit uh, that the farmer is looking for, you know, in the form of uh, cost-effective uh, solutions uh, that solve his problems while improving the yield. So the nature of these uh, 10 products are quite innovative. And we are very proud to have launched them. And, uh, and uh, many of these are likely to do well for us and for the farmer in India. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning and welcome to the show. This is Nigel on this side. We're looking for a couple of numbers. So these 10 products that you've launched, what kind of revenue contribution could they scale up to? Say in the near term, say in the longer term, if you have a number out there. And since five of these are generic uh, formulations, Will there be some pricing pressure or you don't see that as a risk? See the five, let me pick up the five generics point first and then come to the projection for the year. Okay. So the, uh, you know, in our portfolio, one of the things that we have tried to do in this year through these launches is to make the portfolio more balanced. As you may be aware, uh, the herbicide portfolio, albeit it's uh, just 20, 25% of the entire market, it's growing very rapidly because of the shortage of uh, uh, labor, uh, the farm hands. So it's a huge area. And in our portfolio, we are pretty heavy on insecticides and moderately okay on the fungicides. So what you will see in this 10 uh, products that we have launched, uh, it has uh, herbicides and three out of the five generics are herbicides. It's more of a catch-up game for us at the moment, uh, just to make sure that our portfolio is well-balanced. And uh, we also have a couple of fungicides in there. Now, with regard to the overall percentage that we are shooting for, historically, uh, we have had a very good track record. And uh, this year, we are betting uh, big on some of these uh, products, particularly the other five, uh, which are novel or unique. And these are combination products. That's another factor that I would like to emphasize. So in this uh, scheme of things, if you do a solo product, the chances of developing resistance is quite high. So the uh, trends right now are to launch combination products. And these combinations are what we are launching in the other five. And uh, either they are novel in terms of new molecule altogether right. and so, or combinations. So that still doesn't answer our question. You know, that still doesn't answer our question. What is the kind of revenue contribution that you project I'll, from I'll, these products and yeah I'm coming yes, to please. that this is just to uh, you know help the audience understand uh, the basis for giving a number so the the five uh, non generic ones are fairly novel and therefore the potential is quite huge there will be no pricing pressure that you alluded to uh, unlike the generics so the overall revenue that we anticipate to generate in this financial year I'll only give you in percentage terms. I think you'll allow me to do that. About 15 to 20% of our total revenue we anticipate coming from new products. All right, 15 uh, to 20%. Answer? 
Yeah. Yes, 15 to 20 percent uh, revenue it's comes in from these revenue. new products. Okay. Perfect. That's your uh, anticipation. And the overall revenue itself, what are you gunning for in this year for the company? See, the uh, again, uh, we anticipate the volumes to be good because of the monsoon. However, there is uh, significant pricing pressure uh, because of the Chinese overcapacities. So I think let the first quarter go by because the Karif season is about to set in. Maybe I'll be in a better position to give you a specific answer somewhere uh, middle of the year. All right. So if you could give us an answer on the volume front, at least, uh, uh, you know, prices are what the market will take. Uh, what's the kind of volume growth that you're gunning for this year? So historically, as I said, I think, I don't know if you have uh, read through our financial things. I mean, uh, the announcements that we made about the last financial year, we grew by a handsome 21% in volume terms. Yes. So we expect, uh, uh, you know, to sustain something of that order in, uh, in as far as the formulation sales are concerned, at least in the country. All right. What about the project uh, products which are patented and launched in partnership with uh, ISK Japan? I mean, just wanted mm -hmm. to understand uh, what of these launches are in partnership with them and what's the revenue share with regards to them? So there's one product. Uh, the brand is called Prachand. And uh, this is for the rice crop. And uh, it's a pretty uh, a tough pest that we are trying to control through this uh, launch. Um, and it has developed a lot of uh, resistance to many of the products that are out there in the market. Now, this is a novel molecule that has been brought into the country for the first time. So as you might have, uh, you know, if you were to draw a parallel with antibiotics, uh, the resistance gets developed. Uh, because of prolonged use of some of these uh, chemicals. And similarly, the same thing happens in pesticides as well. So this product uh, has been tried and tested, uh, you know, on a large scale, and it is doing a wonderful job. And therefore, we anticipate uh, this to be a flagship product as far as the basket of new products that we have launched. So right. it's going to uh, contribute to a significant chunk of the 15 20% that I mentioned about the revenue that we are planning to get in this uh, financial year from these new products. And what would be the revenue share with ISK? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what proportion? How, what per percentage will you share with ISK? No, ISK builds us and uh, okay. we sell on that. So it's that's the arrangement we have. It's a more of a supplier, you know, customer kind of a relationship. Got it. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for joining in, uh, you know, uh, and giving us uh, the outlook for this year, though we would have liked, you know, uh, some more clarity on the pricing front. But like you said, things are moving. So maybe sometime in the middle of the year, we'll get a lot more on uh, how the Kharif season has panned out and more importantly, what you're gunning for in terms of growth for the next year itself. Last sure. year, the volume sure. growth was over 20 percent. Pricing, of course, came under pressure because of the industry. Wish you good luck for the remainder of Thank this year. Thank you so Thanks much, Mr. David yeah. Konda. Thanks for, for having me. Bye-bye. All right. With that, we'll take a short break. On the other side, we have the management of uh, Gateway Industry Parks. Prem Kishan Gupta, who's the Chairman and Managing Director, joins in to discuss the quarter gone by and the year ahead.